DJ Thorough, a.k.a. Thorough Zano, Bridge to the Streets. Right now, you're watching the hottest in the streets right here on Business50.com. Shout out to my boy, DJ Boy Wonder. We live from One World Studios. The champ is here! Let's go, champ! The champ is here! Let's go, champ! What up, you got champ? the champ in the building. Ooh, you got the champ, champ in the building. You, you don't need no introduction, but introduce yourself. Mm, it's the champ, Shannon the Cannon Bridge, two-time heavyweight champ of the world. Brooklyn Zone, Brownville, Brownville Zone. Or a third heavyweight champion from Browns. Well, here I am with the real champ, hey, DJ Thurl. Hey, he let's said go, it. champ. Hey, he said it, man. I'm going to do this early. When you see us, one knee us. Let me pay oh, respect. Let's go, champ. All right? <laughs> see, you got your sins. I got mine, too. That's right. I see you. I yeah, see you. you see how that works, right? You're the champ. You're the right. champ. So let's get right into it, man. You hold the world record. The record for heavyweights. Excuse me. Let me get this right. You got the most first-round knockouts for a heavyweight in the history of boxing. This is a fact. This is a fact. Right now, it's at 37 through our history of all the guys who right. been knocked out in the first round. Right. Shannon and Cannon hold the record, but um, hopefully it'll be 38 within the next now, month or two. Now, I got to understand how big that is. That's more than Muhammad Ali, Ooh. Jack Johnson, Mike Tyson, uh, Lennox Lewis. Let's go. Uh, who else? I'm missing somebody. It's a lot. It's a lot. Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder. Well. Larry Holmes. Ooh. Leon Spinks. Ken Norton. You know your boxing. George you know your Foreman. Boxing. You Come know on, your baby. Let's Come on, baby. I can get in the ring. You know I'm young. I'm pretty. <laughs> chill, I hit hard. Chill, chill, <laughs> chill, chill, chill. <laughs> All right. You tell me to chill. All right. I got to unleash on you. You know what it is. So, when are you fighting again? Uh, hopefully, I'll be fighting within the next, uh, either April or May. And then, uh, hopefully, one one fight will be being the bare knuckle. I ben, can't believe it, but they're going to let me fight. Ben, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. allowed? Yeah, it's illegal now, so I'll be fighting Ben Knuckle by hopefully May. Now, that's dangerous. Now, I don't know what's more dangerous than that. Either that or driving while black. I don't know which one. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know which one more dangerous. Oh, uh, man, yeah. yeah well, we're going to find out in May. So, you're doing UFC? Is that UFC? Nah, doing? it's called BK, BKC, something like that. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's great. It's taking all people loving it around the world. Right. And uh, hopefully, I'll be fighting and Bring some real heat to now, the game. Now, how is that regulated? Because that's dangerous fighting bare knuckle. Is it like you you can only hit somebody three times, or like how does nah, that work? it's all out. It's all out. It's straight to you know to either knock him out or he quit. Until he quit, you know, a decision him out. as well. This is decision right. Now, well. what made you decide to go that route? Well, it was just it, the opportunity is there. This is I can't believe through our history they actually brought it back. Okay. And they're letting it happen. So why not give it a shot? I'm, I'm still I feel great. I'm 48 years old, but I feel 28. So why, right. Why not give it a shot? I'm in, I'm in great mental. Shape, so why not give it a shot? Right. See what I can do. Now I was going to ask you about that. Like um, with, with age, I always felt that age doesn't matter as long as your body is physical and you're right. able to produce and you get results. Right. You can fight to f forever. This is true. Do you plan on ever quitting, or that's just what it is until you can't fight anymore? Well, you know, Larry Holmes, I think stopped at fifty-two. Fifty-two. Uh, I think you know. He, and I actually recently, you know, a couple years ago, he told me that uh, he said, "Don't stop fighting, man. Keep fighting. So right. enjoy. I'm doing that. I'm having fun, traveling the world, I'm meeting great people." Getting kicked kick it with people like hey, you. I, hey, so here, why not, it. man? Until I can't do it anymore. For me, it's more so like a hobby. Like, in the past, I suffered from depression. Okay. And when I've had real bad times, I would go into eating. So if I don't train or do something, I kind of gain weight. So on boxing, it's been you know, it's always able to keep me in shape. And something to do. But I, you know what they say, when you're bored, nothing to do, you want to be in trouble. Right, Although I'm trouble. a father now, I still right. need to be fit and healthy for for my kids. So right. it keeps me going. Right. You know what? I'm thinking about something. You know, um, Brownsville is... For whatever reason, it's known for a lot, producing a lot of great fighters. Facts. A lot of great fighters. Even Philly, Philly and Brownsville True. have a lot in common. True. A lot of fighters come out of these cities or whatever. Is why do you think you think it's just the environment or it's like why Definitely. does everybody know how to fight in Brooklyn? Well, in Brownsville. Well, you know when people don't have many opportunities and there's poverty, a lot of people living below the poverty line. You uh, often see a lot of crime. So right. uh, this Philly of like like uh, Brooklyn and like Brownsville, right. uh, you know a lot of. Uh, Impoverished pre people, just violent, a lot of violence came out of that. Right. And, um, you know, Brownsville itself has always been a, like a, a bad place where the the mob used to go to get their killers. I believe Murder Inc. was started there. Right. Um, it's just it was a bad place. I recently sat down with Mike Tyson. Did an interview. Okay. Shout out to Mike Tyson. Yeah. Shout out to Mike Tyson. Let's go, champ. And we did a, we did an interview. And Mike was he you know brought me to so much awareness about Brownsville and his history. And I looked it up. He was right. Um, it was a dump for many years, just a dump until a guy named Mr. Brown bought it. Right. And then eventually it was named Brownsville, or Brownsville. Oh, I didn't and know I think that. they shortened it to Brownsville. But um, 
it's always a bad place, and, and from it, uh, but it's always a good, I mean, for us, it was home, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But it, it did produce Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowen, myself, Zab Judah, Zab Curtis yep. Stevens, right. uh, Danny Jacobs, right. and there's a new fighter coming up named Shushu, who's Shushu. Gonna be a, okay. definitely going to be a, a champion for right. sure. But um, it's just always been a place of violence in some, in some ways. And we, and because of that, we actually looking to open up a gym there, the Brownsville Boxing Academy. Now I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, you know, I do a lot of, you know, watching and paying attention. I always notice all these fighters that come out of Brooklyn. There was never a gym for these people, you know, for kids to go right. and hone their skills and you know and train. Why did it take so long? Like, well, there, there's many gyms in Brooklyn. I know Teddy Atlas has a gym, I okay. believe, uh, for some cops and kids, something like that. There's always been gyms throughout the history. I started in Brooklyn at the Stereo City Boxing Club in Eastern New York. Okay. There was Best Stop Boxing Club. But uh, there's never been a, a gym in recent history in Brownsville, in Brownsville itself. Yes, you know? specifically Brownsville. Right. right. Brownsville, we don't even have a house, but we have, well, we don't have a, excuse me, we don't have a uh, high school, but we have a jail. Gym, right. We have a jail as well. Right. And that's one of the things we want to do. We want to stop, we want to do a program where from the jail to the gym, we want to get these kids, because we've realized and come to the realization that over $1 billion has been made in the boxing industry just from Brownsville alone. Just from the if fighters not a half that came a out of Brownsville. Dollars, right. Just from the fight, by far half a billion dollars, just from the fighters from Brownsville alone has produced about half a billion dollars for right. the boxing injuries, industry. Well, I'm sure. So we want to make Brownsville a place where if you're looking for fighters, like you're looking for gold and diamonds, you go to Africa. Right. If you're looking for a fighter, you go to Brownsville, Brooklyn, and get you a heavyweight champion or a lightweight champion because they're right there. Why? Because they need opportunities. Right. Know? Well, I'm sure Mike Tyson was cut half of that in half because he was worth, what, $100 million by the yeah. time he was 19 right. or 20? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's insane. Yeah, I told him recently that I couldn't imagine being 19, 20 years old. Yeah, so right. hundred million dollars, I would have definitely probably killed myself. Right, even even to put that in perspective, like you know, God bless the dead, rest in peace, Pop Smoke. He just, oh, he just you know, he just had a tragic de tragic death. Yes, he was twenty years old, and, I, and obviously he was nowhere near had a hundred million in the bank. But right. that's just to put that in perspective yeah, of, of how young Tyson was definitely. with that type of money. I couldn't imagine that's, being twenty years old with that type of with money. with that type of money. It'd be insane. Right, you can't even drink. You're not even old enough to drink technically. Right, but you got a hundred million in the bank. That's crazy. That that that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Now let's go back Shows to you how big boxing is. No, boxing is very big. Let's go back to your humble beginning. How did how did a young Shannon develop his, his skills and how did he become a boxer? How did he get into boxing? What what drew you to boxing? Oh well, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn, like we said. And, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, you know, unfortunately, when I, I wasn't a kid, you know, into the streets and nothing like that. Okay. My mom, you know, raised me single parent home, and then uh, my stepdad was in and out. And then uh, we got evicted. We lost our home. So we was homeless for like seven years. And throughout that pro on and off for seven years, and throughout that process, my life changed a lot. I had to live in the streets. I had to do these things and learn how to protect myself and defend myself. Right. And fortunately, I was led. People, somebody seen me fighting in school, and it was like, yo, you got some hands. You know? <laughs> must have been a hell of a fight. <laughs> yeah, when you get high school, man. Dude seen me fight a few times, and he was like, but I, aside from that, you know, I had a... Uh, it was it was meant to be, champ. Because right. my, my friend's dad had bought some boxing gloves, and we took him on the basketball court. And it was crazy because guys, I wasn't usually fighting a street fight. We put the gloves on. I was putting it on him. So it, on him, right. yeah, it was crazy. But um, it was, I guess it was overwritten, man, because uh, my life was in the shambles at the time. Right. My mom was um, su suffering from substance abuse. My okay. dad was in prison. My stepdad, who died, he died in prison. He, mm. um, you know, I was by myself, an only child. So right. that led me to the Starry City Boxing Club, where I met Jimmy O'Farrell. And Vito Antifermo, excuse me, Vito Antifermo and those guys, right. and it gave me a life, it gave me an opportunity to, to get on the USA team. Um, I traveled the world, I lived all around the world, I fought around the world, and um, it gave me an opportunity to have a family that I have today. Right. Now, back to your amazing skills that you possessed. If I'm not mistaken, you had like an 86% knockout rate. Yes, brother. You like how I know this stuff, right? Let's go, John. <laughs> <laughs> I need a job with HBO, some, yeah, somebody, send back, somebody, you know what I mean? Come and come and Yeah, I need that, but you had an 86% knockout rate. Now, who was your toughest opponent? Like, who who could who couldn't you knock out? We tried. Maybe you had, there was somebody you couldn't knock out that you tried and you just couldn't get him. Who 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 would that have been? Uh, I I mean, they get back. But you have to understand, I was twenty five years old when right. I fought George Foreman. That was a tough night for That's me. That's crazy. Yeah, I got that was a tough fight for me. I got that decision. Um, but then I fought Lennox Lewis right after that. Right. But I went into that fight with a broken hand. And I you know look you know. I don't want to look back and say, you know, things wasn't good. It was. But I, I went into a lot of fights with elements and stuff like that. But I had a ball. I got to travel the world. Right. I got into movies. I got into acting. I was in Bad Boys 2, Transported 2. And this allowed me to, um, you know, just, again, become something that I had no idea that I would be. I was a kid living in the street, sleeping on the D train, the A train. Right. Sleeping in the shelters. And then I'm here. I am traveling the world, meeting celebrities and 
you know, getting a life that I never thought I'd have. Right. What was it like boxing George Foreman? Because I'm clear, it's obviously that was somebody you obviously looked up to at some yeah, point or yeah. learned from or watched as a kid. Like, did you feel intimidated? Or obviously not, but... Yeah, I was, was scared. Some, what, I was, was scared shitless, but uh, <laughs> I was scared. You wasn't shitless. like at all like, oh, I'm fighting George Foreman. Was, was nah. it, did you have that moment? No, nah, I was a kid, so it was it was it was opportunity. At, at the time, my mom had died. Okay. And um, yeah, you know, I was 25 years old. My mom had just died, and I think that was a lot. That had a lot to drive me. I had a lot to fight for. Okay. I knew that. You know, I was in a bad place. My son was just born, so it was now and ever. Right now. Who are your top five boxers of all time? So who, who, who? Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Leonard. Mm. Muhammad Ali. The greatest. Larry Holmes. Okay. Mike Tyson. Okay. <laughs> in, in that order? Or yes, just, brother. In oh, in that, that, no, 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 no. In no order. Oh, in no, no, in no order. particular order. No, no particular order. Right. Okay, definitely. Dope, dope, dope. Now, let me ask you this. Ali in his prime, you in your prime. Mm. Who, who's winning that? Ali. Oh. <laughs> Ali. Ali. Ali's down. winning that. Yeah. Hands down. The greatest is tearing me up. To tear you up. Let's go, champ. You don't pause, stand a chance. You, you, you don't stand a chance. I don't stand a no, chance. No, hey, that's a lot of people would admit that. That's yeah. no, I respect that. No, I respect that. That's some real shit. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. A champ. lot of people, you know, they feel like no one can beat them. Nah, nah. Ali's the greatest of all time. He's the greatest. Man. He was unbelievable. At his prime, nobody could stop him. Right. Yeah. All right. Now, young kids on the street, they'll, they'll see this, and we're in the, we're in the era of kids want to shoot before they fight. How can yeah. we encourage them to switch that narrative? Yeah, gloves up, guns down, man. That's one of the things we want to do with the Brownsville Boxing Academy. Okay. Uh, one of my first close friends, uh, Kevin, he's from Brownsville. Uh, they call him Killer Kev, but not because he be killing people, just because he's killing he the ring. He's killing the ring, Yeah, right. he, was a, you know, he was a boxer who was uh, really good on the come up, and unfortunately, he got caught up in the streets and he wound up on the prison. Right. Uh, you can catch him on YouTube, but we're going to change his name. You know, <laughs> yeah, you got Coach him. Kev. Coach, Coach Kev, Kev. right. But um, that's one of the things we want to do in Browns, but we want to open up the Browns of Boxing Academy so we can get more kids to come to the gym. And I'm going to tell you right now, though, the emphasis with this gym is money. I'm going to keep it real with you because in the hood, people need money. Right. They need opportunities. But if they can see every day Mike Tyson, three, four hundred million, Riddick Bowe, hundreds of million, Shannon Briggs, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zad Judah, and see all the money right, right. every day, a right. picture of the money that they could potentially they make. Can see it, right. They got to see it. If they can just see it, then they can say, okay, now father will come in and say, you know what? He'll see that and be like, you know what? I could be like Floyd Mayweather Sr. and take my kid, invest in him and to, to becoming a fighter, and he can right. get us out of here. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And or, or whoever, the mom, a single parent, bring a son there. Or we just, kid might be on his own. Come on, champ. We're going to right. make them all champions. That reminds me of Ali, because um, Ali had a thing where he said, you, you got you to gotta ha show people you have something, because if they think you don't have nothing, they don't want to follow you. Mm -hmm. Whether it be material or, or, or spiritual or just um, valuable information. So he used to say, I have two Rolls Royces. It's not one, two mm -hmm. Rolls Royces. Mm -hmm. And when I pull up on the kids on this corner, like, come, come to the gym. Mm -hmm. come. You don't got to do that. You right. can drive this right. boxing, too. That's so, right. And that's how he used to re you know, recruit kids, that's too, because, yeah, you could do the street shit, but... Yeah. I got a Rolls Royce too. Yeah. So come yeah. over here and do nah, what I'm the doing. Street shit is dead. You know I mean, what I mean? They're gonna die out there, right. go to prison, and that's why they got a prison in Brownsville just for the kids. There's a jail right. in Brownsville. We go. We the problem is the kids don't see it. We gotta visually show, show. a picture of the money, Mike Tyson. You know, show them why. And we want you don't have to just be a boxer. We don't. You can be a referee. referee. Right. You can be promoter, a time, a whatever. promoter, a right. manager, timekeeper, right. a judge. You might want to become a doctor and really become, go to medical Medicine, school because right. mm -hmm. you know what? You want to be a boxing doctor. Right. We're going to have classes on Saturdays and stuff like that. It's going to be crazy. The, bo the Brownsville Boxing Academy. Now, when are we looking to get this up and running? Well, we're working on it right now as well as, as well as a docuseries that we're working on with Mike Tyson Productions. Okay. And it's going to be crazy. It's going to be done by Mike Tyson Promotions and Scott Hirsch. It's right. going to be crazy. Now, speaking of Mike Tyson, yeah. I, I don't want to dwell on it too much, but how how did, how close are you guys? Like, What's your relationship with Mike Tyson? Uh, I just, you know, you know, brother, man, Brownsville's together together man you okay. know, family we stick together in Brownsville man we you know people say uh you know we just our own place you know there's Brooklyn but we Brownsville, Brownsville you yeah, feel yeah. we different you feel me they call it the village my man Poppy Pop, my man Poppy like yo it's the village my man right. it's too funny right now Poppy Vasquez, shout now, out to now, my man. now sports and hip-hop always went together let's go champ the hip-hop community was Way, way, way behind with when it was promoting um, my, uh, Mike Tyson. It was always behind Mike Tyson, you know, from Stetson Sonic, Audio 2, you know, down to MOP. You know, like, I want to know who, who's Shannon's favorite hip hop artist? Of all time? Well, well, for whoever. You, you know, I, I grew up in the 80s, so in of the, course right. I was listening to, uh, like, Rock Kim, mm. Big Daddy Kane. Um, 
Uh, come on. Public Enemy. Public Enemy. The, the greats, man. It was right. great times. Music was crazy. It was just coming out. You know what I mean? It was a lot of people coming out that just really got us right. going. It, I, that hip hop has so much to do with our um, culture. I mean, I think society of today is really driven by hip hop. Right. You know, if you look at it, because it changed the world. Hip hop changed Definitely the world did. in the 80s. And I was really a part of it. So it was amazing. Right. No. Have you ever tried to rap yourself? Yeah, I used to try to get busy. You, you, My name was Shan Money. Shan Money? Yeah. You got you got you got any bars? I'm Shannon Briggs. I break ribs now. Nah, nah. Oh come on! <laughs> I was good. Nah, my nephew okay. Fred Money. He the rapper. Oh, yeah. He the rapper. Shout out to Fred, Fred Money. Shout man. out to Fred Money. He the rapper. Word. Shout out, definitely shout out to Fred yeah, yeah. Money. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he's got an EP coming out with uh um, with a Dave East. He got some real big things going on. We got Let's Go right. Champ Records, so expect a big yeah. album from Le for, um, from Fred Money. You know I soon. told Fred how to rap, right? I told I him heard, how to I listen, we know about you. <laughs> Y'all go way back. He told me, All man. Right, Y'all go Fred way back. Me. Now, that's my boy Fred Money. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to J.R. Ride, his brother, no too, doubt. man. Yeah, shout out to Cassidy, too. Let's yeah. go, Champ. Yeah, Cass, keep making the beats, kid. That's right. Let's, Let's go. Hard body. Let's I, go. You know what I mean? Let's go, Champ. Word. I can't yeah. wait for his next battle, too. But for sure. But listen, if anybody want to follow you, get in contact with you, you know, maybe bring their kids to meet you. Give him, you know, give him some advice. Or however, just book you for a Ooh. fight. Check, check me out at shannonbriggs.com. That's where I'm right. at. Or on Instagram, Cannon underscore Briggs. Right. It's the champ, Shannon and Cannon Briggs, right. two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Let's go, champ. Now, what I want to know, too, is what's the what's the most lavish thing you purchased when you got your money? Like, when you, when you hit it big, like, what was the first, what's the craziest purchase you ever made? Mm, man, I don't know. I, I used to love to buy clothes, man. That's why I started my own clothing line. I was like, okay, let's go, champ. That's right. You can check it out at shannonbriggs.com and let's go, champ.com. I started my own clothes. So I was like, you know what? I gave away with so much money, champ, giving it to, like, designers. And, you know, you outgrow the clothes or right. they don't be, they get played out. So I was like, you know what? When, I, when I'm going to start my own stuff. So that's what I'm doing right now. Right. Now, I'm sure you got this question because obviously you're a champ yourself. Right. You're a boxer, you're a professional. Champ. We people, all champs. And people want to know your input. We just saw the fight with um, Fury and mm. Wilder. Yeah. Um, me, personally, I saw it coming when he was fighting Ortiz. Mm. He almost got knocked out when he, when he fought the first time in Brooklyn. Wow. Wilder, was, you know, he, was, he almost checked out then. Right, right, but, right. Or, but Ortiz didn't stay aggressive once he had him. Right, he, right. he backed up. So I knew he was going to go eventually. Yeah. That's just my personal take. Right. You saw the fight. What's your assessment on that? Oh, man, it was amazing. I mean, Fury just he just took it to him. You know, right. he bullied him. He, uh, he walked him down, and that was it. You know, he couldn't he couldn't stop him. Uh, Fury's in force, man. He's 6'9". He has great legs as a boxer. I didn't think he went, He would win. I actually picked Wilder. I yeah, I didn't Wilder, think he was going to win either. I thought Wilder was, um, you know, getting better. I thought I did see some, I guess, looking back now in retrospect, I do see in that, in that uh, Ortiz fight, that second Ortiz fight that, you know what, he was being patient and everything, but maybe that didn't work. You know what I mean? Right. That wouldn't work against Fury. Now, looking back, but I was wrong. I did pick uh, Wilder to win, but uh, Fury proved us wrong, man. He's 6'9". He can box. He's got great legs. He can move his head. I mean, what could, what could, what could you do with that size? Do you think because um, um, he has a 98% knockout rate that he relies too much on that one hit a quitter? Oh, for sure. And, then for that's sure. After, and when that doesn't work, he has really nothing else? That's it. That's it. He's a uh, one-trick pony. You know what I mean? Right. He's a one-trick pony, so... Uh, once he can't knock you out. And that was why I was aggressively, try aggressively trying to fight him in his career early on because I knew that. Knew I knew that. that. Right. I had seen many of his fights, whereas, you know, I wanted to close the gap. Once you, I got a chin. You understand, I fought five heavyweight world champions. I fought George Foreman, Lennox Lewis, um, Francois Botha, Ray Mercer, you feel me? Sergey Lyakovich. So I fought heavyweight champions that could punch. So I knew he ain't going to knock me out. He ain't going to knock you out. He ain't knocking me out. So I knew once I get past that, once right. I got past his thunder, I was going to hit him with the nuclear. You feel me? <laughs> the nuclear? Yeah. You can see the nuclear. This yeah. is the, the nuclear. Let me yeah, show you. Yeah, this is the nuclear. See, this is my nuclear. My joints is scarred up. Yo, that's crazy. Well, now, Pete, is that an implant? Right is that nah. an implant? <laughs> if he catch you with this part, let's good go, night, champ. champ. Right. Good night, champ. Good night, champ. Hold on, like, you got to go like this. You, you can't, let's hold go, champ. You, you can't just, both fists. You let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Listen, you can't just roll up in here, man. Introduce yourself, man. Yeah, talk to now, the you people, see, man. you see my joints are scarred up, little mauled up joints, but that right there, you right. see this part? I don't you can't, like you're not making it out there. implant, you know? You know how girls be getting their shit stuffed? No, 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 Pop bash crash, you know what I mean? I'm the regular guy in the background, you know okay. what I mean? I'm just sweeping and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Nah, this is right. the champ. I gotta, be, I gotta hang out with Up. Yo, Energy is phenomenal, right. you know what I mean? Let's go champ. Let's go champ. Let's get a let's go champ. 
Let's go, Chad. Listen, let's go, Chad. Let them know what you got going on, man. Let them know what you got going on. I'm out here, man. I'm out here, man, trying to put it together for, you know what I mean? We got the dispensary and all that popping off, you know what I mean? Right. Let's go, Champ CBD oils. We doing a lot of a lot of merch. Okay. Everything, man. Now, where's we the dispensary so they can pull up LA, on it? LA. 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 In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles? Right. Los Angeles. In the original. In the original. Los okay. Angeles, man. Now, what yeah. made you go into that field? Obviously, uh, obviously it's money, but, uh, you know. Tell them about your pants. Uh, tell them about I don't your even, I don't even blow, man. I don't, pause, I don't pause. I don't smoke no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It's just all... That's where the bread is at, that's man. The that's the new at. wave of the future. Even the white people smoke. Right. You know you know who, let's go, champ. We get a let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. That's you know, it. You know, you know who else? Let's go, champ, man. You know, yeah. who, you know who else? You know who else got that? <laughs> yeah. Exhibit. That's Exhibit. Go, Word. That's Exhibit right. got yeah. a dispensary. That's smart. That's smart. Look, look. look. My, right. I got the little hands of stone. Only two ah. of my fishes together is match only one. Yeah, that's no, crazy. No, no, no. You cheating? <laughs> that's one. crazy. That's crazy, yo. That's a Lego piece right there. You got body. Put that away. That's a Lego piece. How you got extra fists? You got the Barney Rubble hands, yo. You gonna ask? You gonna ask him why he was a boxer? He got an extra fist. That's crazy. That's why he a boxer. He was it's, born for hey, that. Uh, his, fist is, his fist is pregnant. His fist came out first. I don't want to get hit with oh, those. Y'all already know, man. It's killing Cam from Brownsville. Come here, I'm born and raised, you heard? Right. You know what I'm saying? I got your chance. Guns up. Yeah. yeah, guns down, gloves up. That's right. 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 And we link it back up. We're trying to get these kids together. We're trying to get these kids on a positive note. Put the guns down and the gloves up because that's, right. that's what I told them when I left. That's Don't be right. scared so to take an ass whooping. A lot of kids scared to take an ass whooping. They're going to make money. They're going to make money. They're going to make money. They're going to get me you know millions. I mean? How much money you would have made, Kev, if you ain't get Man, you know how much oh, I would have made. Been, been <laughs> been 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 Vito, Listen, come on, man. I had the mob behind me. You would have made that hundred million. You would have wow. made a hundred million. Yeah, I would have had me. You would have made a hundred million. That's a right. fact. Now, listen, you went to jail. This ain't Vlad TV. We ain't going to get nobody indicted. My bad. Let's go, Chad. My bad. This is 50, you heard? Yeah, yeah. It's the 50 show. You know what I mean? figure it out. Let's go, Chad. Exactly. Yeah, man. So before you go, man, I want to know out of those fighters you fought. Who hit the hardest? Who hit you the hardest? Who got the hardest punch? I by far George Foreman. George Foreman. Yeah, unreal, unreal, unreal. I couldn't believe it, man. It was like unreal. So I know, you know, if he could knock me out, it definitely gave me a lot of confidence. Unfortunately, I, I fought Lennox Lewis, and he was by far he was a very, very hard hitter as well. Uh, I can't take that away from him. He, him and I'll be honest with you, George Foreman and Lennox Lewis right hand was literally kind of like 50-50 the same. Right. Honestly, but um, Lennox Lewis he hit me pretty hard too. But uh, I wasn't in the great shape. I went into that fight with a broken hand, but no excuses. He's no excuses. one. He's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time by right. far. All right, so that's what it is. Yeah. Yo, you ever went to? You know what I did when you went when you left? Yeah. Star right. Yeah. I wound up, Vito wound up taking me out of Star Right City Gym and yeah. taking me to who? Tommy Gallagher's gym. Ooh, yeah. So I see Murphy Sosa, Jake Rodriguez, yeah. um, Laboratory. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Junior Jones was there. Yeah. I we had a lot of champions today. in there. Yeah, but Junior called the, me today. Junior Jones called you today? Yeah, yeah, Salute yeah. to Junior Jones, Let's man. Go, champ. I still got a headache from him from 89. Yeah. I want a rematch. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, good. so yeah, listen, but, before we get out of here, the boss man, 50 Cent, he does a lot of, he does uh, a lot of boxing. Champ, the champ. Right. Maybe you guys should get together and, you know, he can probably help out with the boxing gym or, you know, you probably put on a celebrity dope, fight man. or something. That'd be dope, man. That'd be dope. I'd love to do it, man. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen, man. 50 Cent? 50 Cent, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to 50 Cent, man. Shout out to 50 Cent, man. Let's go, Yo, listen, man. I love your new show, Life Was It Life. Mm-hmm. Yo, for life, for life, for life, for life. yeah, go cool. for life. ABC's Yo, I, listen, I got a pair of steak grease at the crib, man. <laughs> Give me a part, you heard? Let's go, I got my number and everything. Let's go, right, champ. So that's what it is, though. Before right. we get out of here, Pardon man. me, that's Brownsville. We, they all up in the interview. That's some Brownsville okay, stuff. I love it, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, love saying? It. I, love I know it's don't happen often, but it's Chappelle. some Brownsville. Is that Chappelle? <laughs> the Village. Oh, hey, yo, Pop. Hey, yo, Pop, you said The Village? That's Dave Chappelle. That's Dave Chappelle. That's why we act like this, y'all, The Village, man. Bro, right, yeah. We gentlemen. The Village. The Brownsville. Pardon us, y'all. Let's go, champ. We need that. We need that. So listen, before yeah, we get out of here, man, is there anything yeah. else you want to cover? Nah, I just want to say thank you, champ. Right. I appreciate you, man. You the champ for real. Hey, you heard it, man. The champ. Let's go, right? champ. Running with that. Let's go, champ. We're running with that. All right, yeah. so that's what it is. Shannon Briggs, DJ Thorough, hottest in the street. This is 50.com. And like always, when you see us, one knee us. Let me pay respects. 
Let's go, champ! Let's go, champ! Let's go, champ! Let's go, champ!